The Luther Bible, German, Luther Bible is a German-language Bible translation from Hebrew and Ancient Greek by Martin Luther. The New Testament was first published in 1522 and the Complete Bible, containing the Old and New Testaments with Apocrypha, in 1534. It was the first full translation of the Bible into German based mainly on the original Hebrew and Greek texts and not the Latin Vulgate translation. The project absorbed Luther's later years. Thanks to the then recently invented printing press, the result was widely disseminated and contributed significantly to the development of today's modern High German language. <laughs> Luther's New Testament translation while he was sequestered in the Wartburg Castle 1521 Luther began to translate the New Testament from Koine Greek into German in order to make it more accessible to all the people of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. He translated from the Greek text, using Erasmus' second edition 1519 of the Greek New Testament, known as the Textus Receptus. Luther did not translate directly from the Latin Vulgate translation, which was the Latin translation officially used by the Roman Catholic Church. Luther also published the Bible into a small format of book called an Octavio edition. Like Erasmus, Luther had learned Greek at the Latin schools led by the Brethren of the Common Life Erasmus in Deventer, the Netherlands, and Luther in Magdeburg, Germany. These lay brothers added Greek as a new subject to their curriculum in the late 15th century. At that time Greek was seldom taught even at universities. To help him in translating into contemporary German, Luther would make forays into nearby towns and markets to listen to people speaking. He wanted to ensure their comprehension by translating as closely as possible to their contemporary language usage. His translation was published in September 1522, six months after he had returned to Wittenberg. In the opinion of the 19th-century theologian and church historian Philip Schaff, the richest fruit of Luther's leisure in the Wartburg, and the most important and useful work of his whole life, is the translation of the New Testament, by which he brought the teaching and example of Christ and the Apostles to the mind and heart of the Germans in lifelike reproduction. It was a republication of the Gospel. He made the Bible the people's book in church, school, and house. Publication of the Complete Bible Translation Topic. The translation of the entire Bible into German was published in a six-part edition in 1534, a collaborative effort of Luther and many others such as Johannes Bugenhagen, Justus Jonas, Caspar Kruziger, Philip Melanchthon, Matthias Origalis, and Georg Rohrer. Luther worked on refining the translation up to his death in 1546, he had worked on the edition that was printed that year. There were 117 original woodcuts included in the 1534 edition issued by the Hans Luft Press in Wittenberg. They reflected the recent trend since 1522 of including artwork to reinforce the textual message. Theology. Topic. Luther added the word alone, a line in German to Romans chapter 3 verse 28 controversially so that it read, So now we hold, that man is justified without the help of the works of the law, alone through faith. The word alone does not appear in the Greek texts, but Luther defended his translation by maintaining that the adverb alone was required both by idiomatic German and the Apostle Paul's intended meaning, and that sola was used in theological tradition before him. Apologist James Swan lists numerous Catholic sources that also translated Romans chapter 3 verse 28 with the word alone, or testified to others doing so before Luther. A Bible commentary published in 1864 reports that Topic. View of canonicity Topic. Initially Luther had a low view of the Old Testament book of Esther and of the New Testament books of Hebrews, James, Jude, and the Revelation of John. He called the letter of James, an epistle of straw, finding little in it that pointed to Christ and his saving work. He also had harsh words for the Revelation of John, saying that he could, in no way detect that the Holy Spirit produced it. 
In his translation of the New Testament, Luther moved Hebrews and James out of the usual order, to join Jude and the Revelation at the end, and differentiated these from the other books which he considered, "...the true and certain chief books of the New Testament. The four which follow have from ancient times had a different reputation." His views on some of these books changed in later years, and became more positive. Luther chose to place the biblical apocrypha between the Old and New Testaments. These books and addenda to biblical canon of the Old Testament are found in the ancient Greek Septuagint but not in the Hebrew Masoretic text. Luther left the translating of them largely to Philip Melanchthon and Justus Jonas. They were not listed in the table of contents of his 1532 Old Testament, and in the 1534 Bible they were given the well known title. Apocrypha, these books are not held equal to the scriptures, but are useful and good to read. See also Biblical canon, development of the Christian biblical canon, and Biblical apocrypha. Influence The Luther Bible was not the first translation of the Bible into German. The previous German translation from 1350, printed by Johann Mentelin in 1466, was linguistically clumsy, partially incomprehensible, and translated from the Vulgate. Luther's German Bible and its widespread circulation facilitated the emergence of a standard, modern German language for the German speaking peoples throughout the Holy Roman Empire, an empire extending through and beyond present day Germany. It is also considered a landmark in German literature, with Luther's vernacular style often praised by modern German sources for the forceful vigor Kraftvolls Deutsch, with which he translated the Holy Scripture. A large part of Luther's significance was his influence on the emergence of the German language and national identity. This stemmed predominantly from his translation of the Bible into the vernacular, which was potentially as revolutionary as canon law and the burning of the papal bull. Luther's goal was to equip every German-speaking Christian with the ability to hear the Word of God, and his completing his translation of the Old and New Testaments from Hebrew and Greek into the vernacular by 1534 was one of the most significant acts of the Reformation. Although Luther was not the first to attempt such a translation, his was superior to all its predecessors. Previous translations had contained poor German, and had been from the Vulgate Latin translation, i.e. translations of a translation rather than a direct translation into German from the originals. Luther sought to translate as closely to the original text as possible, but at the same time his translation was guided by how people spoke in the home, on the street, and in the marketplace. Luther faithfulness to the language spoken by the common people was to produce a work which they could relate to. This led German writers such as Goethe and Nietzsche to praise Luther's Bible. Moreover, the fact that the vernacular Bible was printed also enabled it to spread rapidly and be read by all. Hans Luft, the Bible printer in Wittenberg, printed over 100,000 copies between 1534 and 1574, which went on to be read by millions. Luther's vernacular Bible was present in virtually every German-speaking Protestant's home, and there can be no doubts regarding the biblical knowledge attained by the German common masses. Luther even had large print Bibles made for those who had failing eyesight. German humanist Johann Cochleus complained that Luther's New Testament was so much multiplied and spread by printers that even tailors and shoemakers, yea, even women and ignorant persons who had accepted this new Lutheran gospel, and could read a little German, studied it with the greatest avidity as the fountain of all truth. Some committed it to memory, and carried it about in their bosom. In a few months such people deemed themselves so learned that they were not ashamed to dispute about faith and the gospel not only with Catholic laymen, but even with priests and monks and doctors of divinity. The spread of Luther's Bible translation had implications for the German language. The German language had developed into so many dialects that German speakers from different states could barely understand each other. This led Luther to conclude that I have so far read no book or letter in which the German language is properly handled. Nobody seems to care sufficiently for it, and every preacher thinks he has a right to change it at pleasure and to invent new terms. Scholars preferred to write in the Latin which they all understood. Luther popularized the Saxon dialect of German and adapted it for theology and religion, which subsequently made it the common literary language used in books. 
He enriched the vocabulary with that of German poets and chroniclers. For this accomplishment, a contemporary of Luther's, Erasmus Alberus, labeled him the German Cicero, as he reformed not only religion but the German language also. Luther's Bible has been hailed as the first German classic. Comparable to the English King James Version of the Bible, which became one of the first English classics. German speaking Protestant writers and poets such as Klopstock, Herder, and Lessing owe stylistic qualities to Luther's vernacular Bible. Luther adapted words to the capacity of the German public and through the pervasiveness of his German Bible created and spread the modern German language. Luther S vernacular Bible also had a role in the creation of a German national identity. Because it penetrated every German-speaking Protestant home, the language of his translation became part of a German national heritage. Luther's program of exposure to the words of the Bible was extended into every sphere of daily life and work, illuminating moral considerations for Germans. It gradually became infused into the blood of the whole nation and occupied a permanent space in a German history. The popularity and influence of his translation gave Luther confidence to act as a spokesperson of a nation and as the leader of an anti-Roman movement throughout Germany. It made it possible for him to be a prophet of a new German national identity and helped form the spirit of a new epoch in German history. In a sense the vernacular Bible also empowered and liberated all Protestants who had access to it. The existence of the translation was a public affirmation of reform, such as might deprive any elite or priestly class of exclusive control over words, as well as over the Word of God. Through the translation Luther was intending to make it easier for simple people to understand what he was teaching. In some major controversies of the time, even some evangelicals, let alone the commoners, did not understand the reasons for disagreement, and Luther wanted to help those who were confused to see that the disagreement between himself and the Roman Catholic Church was real and had significance. So translation of the Bible would allow the common people to become aware of the issues at hand and develop an informed opinion. The common individual would thus be given the right to have a mind, spirit and opinion, to exist not as an economic functionary but as subject to complex and conflicting aspirations and motives. In this sense, Luther's vernacular Bible acted as a force towards the liberation of the German people. The combination of Luther's social teachings and the vernacular Bible undoubtedly had a role in the slow emancipation of Western European society from a long phase of clerical domination. Luther gave men a new vision of perhaps the exaltation of the human self. Luther's vernacular Bible broke the domination and unity of the Roman Catholic Church in Western Europe. He had claimed Holy Scripture to be the sole authority, and through his translation every individual would be able to abide by its authority, and might nullifying his or her need for a monarchical pope. As Bishop Fisher put it, Luther. S. Bible had stirred a mighty storm and tempest in the church, empowering the no longer clerically dominated public, although not as significantly as on German linguistics. Luther's Bible also made a large impression on educational reform throughout Germany. Luther's goal of a readable, accurate translation of the Bible became a stimulus towards universal education, since everyone should be able to read in order to understand the Bible. Luther believed that mankind had fallen from grace and was ruled by selfishness, but had not lost moral consciousness, all were sinners and needed to be educated. Thus his vernacular Bible could become a means of establishing a form of law, order and morality which everyone could abide by, if all could read and understand it. The possibility of understanding the vernacular Bible allowed Luther to found a state church and educate his followers into a law-abiding community. The Protestant states of Germany became educational states, which encouraged the spirit of teaching which was ultimately fueled by Luther's vernacular Bible. Finally, Luther's translated Bible also had international significance in the spread of Christianity. Luther's translation influenced the English translations by William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale who in turn inspired many other translations of the Bible such as the bishops. Bible of 1568, the Douay-Rheims Bible of 1582-1609, and the King James Version of 1611. It also inspired translations as far as Scandinavia and the Netherlands. In a metaphor, it was Luther who broke the walls. 
of translation in Western Europe and once such walls had fallen, the way was open to all, including some who were quite opposed to Luther's beliefs. Luther's Bible spread its influence for the remolding of Western European culture in the ferment of the 16th century. The worldwide implications of the translation far surpassed the expectations of even Luther himself. Topic. Excerpted examples Topic. Topic. See also Topic. Elector Bible German Bible translations Protestant Bible Permanent exhibition Luther and the Bible at Lutherhaus Eisenach Topic. References Topic. Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. Further reading Topic. Antliff, Mark. The Legacy of Martin Luther. Ottawa, McGill University Press, 1983 Atkinson, James. Martin Luther and the Birth of Protestantism. Middlesex, Penguin Books, 1968 Bindsale, H. E. and Niemeyer, H. A. Dr. Martin Luther's Bibelübersetzung nach der letzten original Ausgabe, Kritisch Berbete. Seven Vols. Halley, 1845-55. The N.T. in Vols. 6 and 7. A critical reprint of the last edition of Luther 1545. Niemeyer died after the publication of the first volume. Comp. The Probibible The Revised Luther Version, Halley, 1883. Luther's Sendbrief vom Dolmeschen und Ferbet der Heiligen with a letter to Wenceslaus Link, September 12, 1530, in Walch, 21. 310 SQQ, and the Earl. FRKF, ed. Vol. 65, 102-123, free open access edition with new English translation by Howard Jones for the Taylor Institution Reformation pamphlet series with an introduction by Henrik Lahnmann. Blum, Heinz. Martin Luther, Creative Translator. St. Louis, Concordia Publishing House, 1965. Brecht, Martin. Martin Luther, Three Volumes. James L. Schaff, Trans. Philadelphia, Fortress Press, 1985-1993. ISBN 0-8006-2813-6, ISBN 0-8006-2814-4, ISBN 0-8006-2815-2. Dickens, AG The German Nation and Martin Luther, New York, Harper and Rowe. Edwards, Mark 1975, Luther and the False Brethren, Stanford, Stanford University Press. Jerish, B.A. Reformers in Profile. Philadelphia, Fort Press Press, 1967 Green, V.H.H. Luther and the Reformation. London, B.T. Batsford, 1964 Grizar, Hartman. Luther, Volume 1 London, Luigi Capodelta, 1914 Lindbergh, Carter. The European Reformations. Oxford, Blackwell, 1996 Lyons, Martin. Books, A Living History. Thames and Hudson, 2011. R.E.U., John M. Eichel. Luther and the Scriptures. Columbus, Ohio, The Wartburg Press, 1944. Reprint, St. Louis, Concordia Publishing House, 1980. 1984, Columbus, O., The Lutheran Book Concern, 1934, Luther's German Bible, an historical presentation together with a collection of sources, St. Louis, Concordia Publishing House. Ritter, Gerhard. Luther, His Life and Work. New York, Harper and Row, 1963 Topic External links Topic Luther's Biblia Germanica 1545, Last Hand Edition. Luther's Translation of the Bible in Philip Schaff's History of the Christian Church. Works by or about Luther Bible at Internet Archive Works by Luther Bible at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Luther's 1545 Bible, Illustrated and Navigable. EPUB, Moby, PDF and Online. Let's Hand Edition.